Bible, what I was actually looking for here is some principles in the Word of God that I could apply to my life that would impact my life in a positive way. I've always believed, till this day, I always believed that life for you as a believer ought to be better than life was for you as an unbeliever. Amen. I'm a Christian now. I'm saved now. And so I grew up in and around, I was raised up in and around poverty. I never liked poverty. In fact, there's nothing good about poverty. I think it's Proverbs 10, 15 says poverty brings destruction. Ain't nothing good about it now. So I don't care what folks say, you know, they can take vows of poverty they want to. My Bible tells me poverty is a curse. So I didn't want no part of it, still don't want no part of it. And I sure don't want no part of it for you, you, your family, your, that, you know, all that generational mess. That's over. In Jesus' name, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law, poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. But I, I discovered now, because I had questions, I've always been had a, an analytical mind. I just got questions, and I, I said, okay, I am saved now, okay? I'm born again. I'm definitely on my way to heaven. I am rapture ready right now. If he, I, I can just pray. If he come, I'm going. I'm going on the first load. You hear me? I'm rapture ready. Tell somebody, me too, me too. I'm, I'm rapt. Yeah, Jesus, Jesus. I, you know, I was confronted, of course, by a Jehovah Witness yesterday, and I had the opportunity, boy, I said, go get your Bible, it's on. And, you know, so we, but, but bottom line, let me tell you something, Jesus is the only way to heaven, he's not one of the ways to heaven, Jesus and Jesus alone, faith in Jesus, that's what your salvation, my salvation rests in, faith in Jesus and nothing else. That's exactly right. So now I'm born again, I'm on my way to heaven, but I had a question. I just was wondering, does God, Sister Ricks, have anything to say about life right now? Or is it, like they said, like the priest, is it, is it all over yonder in the sweet by and by when I see Peter, James, and John? Does God Almighty, my Heavenly Father, even care about my life here on earth? And I found out, it was in the Word all the while, St. John 10.10 10 says, that Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it how? Oh, a, a, a more abundantly. Amplified says, to the full till it overflows. Whew. Now, that, now I can read. I, listen, he said I, a, a, abundant life is available to every one of his children. But it's not automatic. We got a part to play. That's what I didn't understand. I, you know, I thought, boy, if God wants you to have something, you're just going to automatically have it. Well, we know that ain't true. It's the will of God. Peter said that nobody, that everybody be saved, everybody repent and be saved, and nobody be lost. That's the will of God. But, but you got to do so. You got to receive Jesus. So, so, so we, got, we got a part to play. So that's the difference. I said, okay, Acts 10, 34, Sharon thought, God said, that he's no respecter of persons. He don't have any favorites. So now, I just got to find out what's my part and do my part. Amen? Amen. Amen. I remember Dr. Betty, she was, uh, I, I had her and Apostle Price come. You know, they would come. Uh, uh, and, and so this time, I had her speaking to the women. And of course, I had him speaking on, to us, the regular congregation. And I remember her saying something to the women at showers. I'll never forget it. Dr. Betty Price said, she said, let me tell you something. She said, if your marriage, if it don't work, if it fails, make sure you're not the reason. If, make sure you do your part. Because all you can do is your, is your part. Come on now. Come on. I, I, can't, I can't be responsible for nobody else. But I can, do my, I can stand before God and say, God, I did. I, I, Amen. Then I later on said it's your duty to give up. Okay, and all that. But anyway, Philippians chapter 4, y'all don't start nothing. It won't be nothing tonight. I'm trying to be nice. Amen. All right. <laughs> Philippians chapter number 4. So I found out that there were laws in the Bible. Okay? That God operates. He, he brings that abundant life comes through us practicing Biblical principles over time. It's not nothing get rich quick, nothing overnight. And so religion, and I hate religion. Come on, say me too. All right, Johnson. Religion is knowing the truth but not practicing it. Amen. It's knowing the truth but not practicing the truth. 
Apostle Price told us, you got to love the people, teach the word, love the people, and, and do the word. Do what it said, practice it, because preachers and pastors don't get discount tickets, Amen. which simply means, what, is it, what do you think that means to you? If I say to you, a pastor, I'm a pastor, but, a pre, but I don't get any discount tickets. I got to live the word. I got to do the word just like you got to do it, right? I'm anointed to teach it, but I'm not anointed to live it. I have to apply it to my life. So I started going to the Bible because I hate religion. I want to practice it. I want to do it. And, and, I, and lo and behold, because Jesus said, the Bible says in St. John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you what, class? It'll make you free. Free what? Free to enjoy life. Yeah, religion puts you in bondage. The truth of the word will make you free. I don't care what area you bound, it'll make you financially free, marriagely free, free in your mind, free in your body. Amen. And I like freedom. I do. I like to. Amen. Ain't nothing, thank God for freedom. Amen. You shall know the truth. That word know is like Adam knew Eve. Intimacy. When you get into the truth of the word of God and go from just, 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 you know, knowledge, but head knowledge to revelation and some application, it's going to make, it's going to be, you're going to see some manifestation in your life. Oh, that, that rhyme, revelation, uh, application, come on, King Flash, and manifestation. See, y'all, y'all miss, that's all right. <laughs> Philippians chapter number four. So I found some laws and the biggest Two things that I found that, that changed my life, Barbara, is, that, of course, Romans talks about the law of faith, okay? Everything in the kingdom of God is activated and accessed by our faith. So I started to understand how faith operates because it's, it's not magic, it's a process, right? So I started out understanding and applying the principles of faith. Faith comes by hearing but it's released by words through your mouth. And boy, I started, that's the, one of the most greatest challenges you're going to have as a believer is that little rupture below your nose. Because nobody ever taught me for you that, 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 that this had anything to do, my tongue had anything to do with my life, but it does. Death and life is in the power of, of the tongue. So, so once you're being taught, you need accurate teaching, which is going, the teaching is going to impact your thinking and the thinking is going to impact your talking. So if I get taught right, so it matters where you go to church, I get taught right, I'm getting good teaching, but then my teaching is going to help me to renew my mind, get my thinking straight. Because I, I, you know, you know yeah, when we come to Jesus at first, we, we pretty messed up. I, I'm talking about it in our mind. Got some, got some crazy thinking. I know a man, he thought, man, his wife was supposed to be like his slave. You know, when I say jump how high and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I'm Tarzan. Me, Tarzan, you Jane. And it, it would be, it, you know, it ain't would be so bad, but most women, these sisters, they ain't going to cooperate with that. <laughs> so so, so we, we got some of this, uh, this, the, this archaic stinking thinking, right? And as I get my thinking straight, lo and behold, guess what? My talking get right. I'm, I'm talking the word. I'm not murmuring, complaining, and talking about what I don't have and what I can't do. Amen? Now, so I started using my faith, Thorn. Right? And then I got into this law. Look at Philippians 4. Called the law of giving and receiving. Who, Lord. So, I'm, I'm living an amazing supernatural life. Say this with me. Say, I do not live a normal life. I live a supernatural life built on God's word and empowered by God's spirit. I am living, my wife and I, I'm living an exceptional, amazing, supernatural lifestyle. I got some degrees, but it, I live, I'm living far beyond my talent and my degrees and my skill and my education. To God be the glory. Every need is met. Every bill is paid. No debt on my houses, automobiles, credit cards, student loan, no tax debt, no notes, no balances. Glory to God. 
I believe I got one of the best marriages in the world. At least I, I like her. I don't just love her. I like her. My wife is my very best friend. Yeah, I, 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 took, I went birthday shopping for her yesterday. I took Apostle Anderson with me. Yeah, oh boy, he, I, he was like, what? My God. And, uh, and I was walking him through that mall, but I didn't know I was walking that fast. So I went to get my wife a certain perfume, and it was at, at, I thought it was at Belts, and they, Belts said they don't sell it no more. So on the other end, I said, it's at Macy's, and I know it's at Macy's. But the thing about Macy's is on the other end of the mall. So Apostle Anderson, he said, listen, I'm going to sit right here. <laughs> I hope he watching. I said, I said, man, you going to be all right? He says, you go on. And, I, and, and come on back, my God. But uh, <laughs> so, so, we, so I, I, thank, I thank God. I thank God for the, for the life because I believe, watch this now, I believe it's because I know how to use my faith and I'm a big giver. Amen. So, so I've been a six-figure giver for, for years. Amen? Amen. No, notice what I said. I, I'm, a, I'm a big giver. Yeah. I'm not a big gaver. That's right. That's right. No, that, I'm going to get to it in a moment. God loves cheerful, givers. not gavers. Givers. A lot of folk are gavers. Yeah. Well, you know, back there about, you know, last month, I, I dropped. But, but, but wait a minute. Uh, uh, giving, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, is not just an event. It's a permanent lifestyle, giving and receiving. Okay, watch this. Notice now in, in Philippians chapter 4, Paul says this, all right? He says there in Philippians 4 verse 15, when you have it, say amen. amen. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared, that word shared or communicate means partnering with. And it's involving finance. He said no church shared with me concerning what, Minister Thorne? Concerning what? Giving and receiving, but you only, for even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessity, not that I seek gift, but I seek fruit that may uh, that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound, I am full. Now watch this. He says, giving and receiving. So here's what we understand right off the bat. In the mind of God, giving and receiving is inseparable. Yeah. There's no just giving, and there's no just receiving. It's the law of giving and receiving. Some call it the law of seed, time, and harvest, Minister Dale. Some call it the law of reciprocity, right? It's the law of giving and receiving. The law of giving and what? Okay, let's delve into this. Go over to, uh, flip back to Malachi, go to Malachi chapter number three. Malachi chapter number three. Malachi chapter number what? Three. Number three. I'm not just a tither, I am also a giver. Amen? Amen? Amen. But it's important that we understand and I think God, Joe already taught Joshua this, that, that, that the tithe is the foundation for the prosperous life in God, Sister Riggs. Okay? The tithe gets God involved financially in our lives, so the tithe is important. But what we understand when it comes to this law of giving and receiving, and I'm going to deal with both of them because there are some Christians, Sister Ward, they struggle with giving. Not very few in this church, no doubt about it, no doubt about it, okay? But some Christians do. They struggle with giving, and, and, and then, but then there are some Christians, and I know if, uh, in this church, because I, I, I struggle with this, they struggle with receiving. And if you're going to do this thing God's way, you got to operate, you got to understand giving and receiving. Now, giving comes out of the 90%. What do you mean the 90%? Here's the statement. You haven't given until you tithe. Okay, okay, all right. You have not given until you what? It's on the screen. So, tithe, the tithe and the offering or the giving, tithes and offering are two different things. They are not the same. 
Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, will a man rob God, yet ye have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? He, he says it right here, in tithes and offerings. The tithe is not an offering. They're not the same. They're different. Whatever amount you pay after you tithe is an offering. Now, I don't like to assume nothing. I know, I know, oh, you know, but you get new people watching all the time. You don't know what people know or don't know. And we want everybody to get on this prosperity train that's going down the track, right? So, so this just right, right quick. So what's a tithe? What's a tithe? We'll put it on the screen. A tithe is a, it's a tenth. It, it's the tenth part. It's the first ten percent or, let's break it down, it's a it's a dime out of every, tell every dollar. Look at your neighbor and say, it's still just a dime. I don't care. It's still, it, I, don't, I mean, it's still just a dime. Either way you look at it. And that's, that's the foundation now. That's, that's the start. That gets you in. That gets God involved uh, in your financial affairs. All right? So, tithe, dime out of every dollar. Now, so I'm going to tithe, he tells me, you, you, he says, uh, verse 10, verse 10, Malachi 3, look at verse 10, bring all the, all the tithe. And notice he said, bring it. So you need to come to church. Get Sunday's message, get Sunday's message. I talked about spiritual jurisdiction and who is your pastor. Yeah, you don't want to just watch nothing on the screen, you're supposed to be on the scene. Amen. Bring it. Tell somebody, bring it. Bring it with you. Bring it. Bring it. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse <laughs> that there may be food or meat or resources or money in my house. And try me. Prove me now in this area. Now in this, says the Lord of, of hosts. So now we see, we know what the tithe is and we know what the offering is. The, so the giving comes out of the 90%. And we at Showers believe that 90% of your income with the blessings of God on it will go a lot further than 100% under the curse. We believe that we can live better lives on 90% than some folk doing on 100%. They're using all the money. They ain't giving God nothing, and we believe we can do better on 90%. I ain't the only one. I know, I know. Come on, yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, yeah. This, 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 is, this is powerful. Now, so I'm not just a tither, but I'm also a giver. Now, the concept of giving, I want, we're talking about giving and receiving, so let's break it down. Let's take our time and let's talk about giving for a moment, and then I'm going to talk about you receiving, and then I'm going to pray for you. I shared a little bit of it in prayer, in men's 5.30 prayer, 5.30 in the morning now. We had in prayer on Mondays. I shared a little bit about the prophetic word, and I, I swore them the secrets. Shh, don't, don't tell nobody. I, I'm just giving y'all it, but, but I'm going to release it Sunday. Don't tell nobody before Sunday. So none of y'all are supposed to know but the brothers that was at the, I mean, okay. But, part, but, but 2023 will be the best year of your life. No, no, no. It, there's some stuff I'm preparing. Woo, but watch this, watch this. Let's talk about it. Let me, let me stay, stay right here. Calm down, Grant. Just, okay. My excited is excited and my turned on is turned on. Amen. The concept of giving came from God and not man. So it's not a game, it's not a gimmick, it's not something some preacher con, uh, came up with. Giving is what God says. So we look at Luke 6.38, and in Luke 6.38, Jesus says, give! Wait a minute, Jesus. Uh-huh, Jesus would you tell your neighbor, say, tell them, just tell them, Jesus said give, Jesus. Put Luke 6, 38 up there. So Jesus said give and it shall be given unto you. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Jesus said give and it shall be given unto you. Well, the opposite or the converse is also true. If you don't give, then it what? It don't be given to you. Okay, real simple. All right. Acts 20, 35. Jesus is credited with saying, Acts 20, 35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. receive. So the greater a blessing is in the giving. Why, Pastor? Because giving causes receiving. 
Giving is so powerful and so potent and so important. The Bible teaches us that giving is the one thing that will destroy greed and selfishness. Jot down Luke chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, verse 15 through 21. Jesus tells the parable. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus tells a parable. It's called the parable of the rich fool. He was not a fool because he was rich. He was a fool because he had money and he was selfish and he was greedy and he wasn't rich toward God. He wasn't trying to be a blessing to nobody. In fact, in that one parable that Jesus told in Luke 12, the man, the fool, Jesus called him a fool. He said the words my five times and the word I six times. The only proof that you really conquered greed and selfishness is giving. Amen. It'll keep that spirit of greed and selfishness off of you. And then giving is proof of our trust in God. You say you trust God. Don't tell me you trust God and you can't trust him with your money. Amen. Showing up, don't tell me you love God and you don't give him none of your money. Because I didn't say it. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 21, where your treasure or your money is, there will your heart be also. And you can't con or play God. He's looking at your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows what's important to you. Show me your calendar and your checkbook. I'll tell you what's really important to you. Where you putting your money at? See, the Bible, okay, watch this. Giving, watch this. We know giving is powerful because giving is gain. It's not loss. Giving is gain. Here's the statement. We give to have. The reason we give, watch this. We give so we can have something. That is so contrary, that contradicts the world's thinking. But in the kingdom of God, we give to have. And we know, here's another statement, that every seed reproduces after its kind. What do you mean every seed reproduces? It's the law of Genesis. Every seed reproduces after its kind. That's Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, verse, I think, 12, 13. It, it, the Bible talks about every seed reproduces after its kind. Never believe God for a money miracle without involving some money. There once was a man, some called him mad, but the more he gave, the more he had. You got to, in order to, in order to have, you got to give something. It, giving is gain. It's not loss. Every seed reproduces after its, we reap the same in kind as we sow. We, we reap more than what we sow. You can count the number of seeds in a watermelon, but you can't count the number of watermelons in a seed because we do know Hosea 8 and 7 says, Hosea 8 and 7 says, they sowed the wind and reaped the whirlwind. Because you always, it's, it's always more, it's always more. Giving is gain. Giving is an opportunity to increase your income. Opportunities can be all around us. And you have to recognize opportunities. And when you a giver, God will help you to recognize and spot opportunities. Single parent lady, man, she was in distress because she wanted some money to buy her uh, some Christmas toys for her children. And she wanted a good meal and all that. And she, she was coming up short. So she put a hat. It was wintertime. She put a hat coat on. And she goes outside, says the lions, because she, she didn't want her children to see her crying. And she's crying out to God. And the Holy Ghost showed her up to The Holy Ghost said, look down. And she looks down. And the thought came from the Holy Ghost. Bag up all them pecans you've been walking on in your yard. And take them down there to that country store, and I want you to sell them. That woman bagged them and was low and She had enough money, not just for, more, for Christmas toys, Christmas dinner, and leftover money. She was walking on. She was walking on the blessing. It was under her feet all the while, but God had to reveal it. There's some opportunities out there. God going to show you because you a tither and a giver. Amen. Giving, watch this. When we give now, God uses what we give to bless others, and then he multiplies the seed we give back to us. That's 2 Corinthians 9, verse 10. He multiplies the seed sown. 
So giving, everybody say giving. Giving, 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 giving. giving. It's so powerful, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, that God gave us guidelines for giving. Say, shout out, guidelines for giving. It's so poor because God don't want us to be, uh, you know, he don't want nobody to run no game on us because there are con men, there's crooks, cons, there's charlatans, there's counterfeiters. So what God did, he put it in the word, he gave us some safeguards, right? If you ever been bowling and you can't bowl, they got something you can put rails up so you don't have to get them gutter balls all the time. God, God put some guardrails up when it comes to your giving so, so people won't get over on you, right? You won't be bamboozled, run them up. Amen? So what are some guidelines? Here they are. Got three of them for you. Number one, when, you, when the offering appeal is made, Sister Lyons, and, 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 and here's what you got to do now. Purpose in your own heart, number one. Number two, you got to give it willingly, no pressure, and you should give, it should be mutually beneficial. All spirit-led giving is mutually beneficial. Let's look at this for a moment. 2 Corinthians 9, and then I'm going to get to the receiving part. 2 Corinthians what? 9, and look at verse number 6. Purpose in your heart, verse 6 and 7. 2 Corinthians 9. Now, write this down. The word purpose means to choose for oneself. It means to choose for oneself. Purpose means the what? That's right, to choose. Nobody can, nobody, nobody's going to you know, put no pressure on you. No, you go, choose for one's self. All right, 2 Corinthians, what did I say? 9 and 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will reap also sparingly, and he who sows or gives bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one what? Okay, now here's the instructions. He's putting some guidelines on it. Let each one give as he purposes in his heart. As he purposes in his, his heart. Every year I purpose to do more, give more. I'm purposing in my heart. Yeah, I'm purposing in my heart. Okay? And I, no, nobody making me do it. Nobody, you know. But God don't want us to be bamboozled, run amok. He don't want nobody to try to get over. So, so as you purpose, and then, then second of all, watch this. He says, not grudgingly, not sad. It's giving time and showers a blessing, Christian Center. That's what y'all do, but not everybody. Some folk are sad at that saying. And sometimes we get it from the pulpit. Folks say, some preachers get up there talking about, well, we don't come down to the offering. Come down, down to the offering. How you come down? Why is down? Let's go and get this offering out the way. I know. No! It's prosperity time. You know what I mean? We, listen, listen, watch this. He said, not grudging. In other words, I'm not saying it. Or of necessity. You, you're not mad. And, and, and necessity also means is when people say, send it now, don't delay. The blessing is connected to this moment. And they put pictures of babies with bloated stomachs and, fly, and flies all around them and, 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 and all of that. And it gets you, it, it messes with your emotions. But watch this. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, in the Message Bible, listen to this. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7 says, I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. Because some of us, I've been there, Suckers for sob stories. 
We're just reaching out. In it, in it. And we don't, even, we, don't in, we don't even investigate before we invest. But this level, God said, God's going to bless you. You're going to have to, you can't just be moved by sob stories and arm twisting. If you don't help us, we're going under. Wait a minute. No, no, no. You know, I'm going to lose my house if you don't help me. No, no, you're going to lose your house because you didn't pay the bill. Don't put me in, don't, leave me out of that equation. I ain't had nothing to do with all that. See, some of y'all get, you don't want to waste seed. Amen. I want to, he wants us to give willingly, not sad or mad, but glad. Isaiah 1, 19, if you be willing and obedient, you lead the good of the land. You know, attitude matters to God, just like attitude matters to, to me. My wife would tell you, you can't do nothing for me, nothing for me with an attitude. I don't want it. I don't trust it. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand some brothers. They make their woman upset and then talk about go cook me something. I, I, got, I, got, I got scarred as a child. I'll never forget this. My granddaddy came in half drunk, and he, 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 my grandma sleep, and he waking up to my, Sunan, make me an egg. He called a Sunan. Make me an egg, Sam. He wanted an egg. I, and I'm watching this going on now. I'm a little kid. And so she goes in the kitchen, and I, 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 I mean, my, my grandma, she took almost the whole thing of salt and put it in the egg. Put, some, put it between two pieces of bread and said, here, Roy, leave me alone. And he started eating. <laughs> and he said, he said, Sudan, you put some salt in this egg. She said, I ain't putting no salt in that egg. You drunk. Man, I said that. I don't know. It just, it, 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 it's it, on my thinking, boy. You can't do nothing for me with an adder. I don't know. You made something new. And then I fooled around. I don't know if y'all remember. I watched Roots back in the day in, in the 70s. And that woman spit in that dog. She spit in the water. Oh, you saw. Oh, Lord. I said, oh, no. I go to a restaurant. You can't be with me and make folk mad and all that. I'd be, I be like, no, no, no. You, you be calm. Calm all that down. Because I've worked in the kitchen. I've worked at a steakhouse before. And I see what happens if you make folk mad back there. Okay, I'm just telling you. <laughs> so, 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 so the guidelines for giving is as you purpose in your own heart, there's no... Pr and here's an example. Go to flip back to Exodus 35. Exodus what? 35. McGee, I'm waiting on a figure from uh, Sharon Bell. See if you got it. Exodus 35, 35, verse 4, verse 4 through 6. So they're getting ready to build the tabernacle. So God instructs his man Moses. He said, I want you to go ask the people for, to give. Ask them for an offering. Ask them to give in the offering for the tabernacle. So look at verse 4, Exodus 35, 4. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you a what? Yeah, tell them to give. Take an offering to the Lord, whoever is of... Oh, see, that uh, attitude is important to God. A willing heart. Amen. Let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's hair. So, he tells them, we got something we need to do at church, so to speak. It's like the pastor, he gets up, he says, you know, we got a pro kingdom project, something we got to do. So, I need y'all to give. Okay, so here's what they did. Notice, look at verse 20. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses, then everyone came whose heart was stirred, and everyone whose spirit was what? Willing. Was what? Willing. Why y'all whispering? Was what? Willing. Willing. And they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting for all his service and for the holy garments. Verse 29, drop down, verse 29. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord, all the men and women whose hearts were willing 
to bring material for all kinds of work which the Lord, by the hand of Moses, had commanded to be done. So, notice how it happened. Okay, Michelle, they were given instructions by the minister. Pastor gets up, hey, y'all, we're paying the church off. Bless God, we want everybody to give, like, we, want, we need to go ahead and get this done. Bless God with this thing, well, well we come up, we, we done brought this thing down, let's get the job done, Okay. God wants us, let's just do it. This part of the vision, we're going to pay this, we're going to burn this, the mortgage on this building in Jesus' name, okay? So, 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 that, so, so the, Moses told them, the people leave and they get before God in God's presence. See, nobody can ever run a religious con on you if you're praying. Your prayer life is a safeguard. And then, and then after they prayed about it, then they bring the offering. They bring the offering. Now, if you, had a, if you had a meeting, they raising the budget for that night, you know, we, you got to go and get the budget for that night. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about kingdom projects. So notice now, there's no public embarrassment. Every real man stand up and give me $20. Well, now, first of all, that's crazy because I'm a real man if I don't give you 20 Yo, good. Don't be trying to play me. Okay, watch this. <laughs> there's, no public, there's no pressure, y'all. No public embarrassment. There's no individual or group pressure. There's no manipulation in the appeal. Moses allowed the people, Sister McGee, time to get away, hear from God, go home, pray about it, and then come back. And they brought the offer, and they did it willingly. Amen? It's the Holy Spirit's job to get you to give, not mine. That's why there's no stress, no strain, and no struggle. So, the giving guidelines, number one is what? Purpose in your own heart, number two? Willingly. Number three is spirit-led giving is mutually beneficial. Mutually. Go to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. I got 10 minutes. Luke chapter what? Luke chapter number 8. Watch this. Mutually beneficial. In the kingdom of God, it's not one-sided. It's not the preacher getting blessed or the church getting blessed and you go without. That ain't how God designed it. It's mutually beneficial. What you make happen for others, God make happen for you. So here, Jesus had ministered to a group of women. Luke 8 and 1. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the 12 were with them. Look at verse 2. And certain women who had been what? They had been ministered to, Sister Lyons. They sat up on the, I mean, Jesus, I mean, Jesus blessed their lives, changed their lives forever, been healed of evil spirits. What kind of spirits? Evil spirits. There's still some evil spirits around, y'all, by the way. I'm developing a series for next year uh, dealing with spiritual warfare. And, and Brother Armstrong, I'm coming out the gate with uh, the first um, lesson is, 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 is your, your real enemy. Because some of you, you're dealing too much with flesh and blood. And you got to, on the job, somebody messing with you, just stupid stuff, your children, your spouse, you got to get behind the person and deal with the spirit that's operating in and through the person. And you got the authority, Minister Dale, to do it. Now watch this. So they had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come how many demons? She had seven demons in her. That girl got delivered. How many know she was glad? Yeah, Sometimes you're just dealing with a demon-possessed person, and, 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 and the reason, reason they get so agitated around you is because the Jesus in you is agitating the demon in them. And you got to cast it out on the job. Go 20 minutes early to work and take your anointing all. The devil, the blood of <laughs> Our weapons are this, it's not natural, brothers and sisters. Amen. The weapons of our warfare, they ain't no natural stuff we're dealing with. Watch this. And so watch this. In verse, it says, And Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod, Stuart, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him from their substance. I, I want you to notice it was mutually beneficial. Their lives were changed by his ministry. And as a result, 
they start giving into his ministry. Amen. Which brings me to number two, giving. It's giving and receiving. Notice now, here's my statement. Who God uses to bless you now is his business, not yours. It's on the screen. God can use your family, friends. He can use sinners, saints. He can use white folk, black folk, brown folk, red folk, yellow folk. He can use rich folk, poor folk. He can use birds. He used a raven for the prophet in 1 Kings 17. God can use the government. Give you another stimulus check. You don't mind. God can use life insurance. God your insurance. He can use business. You cannot dictate and determine who God uses. Uh, in fact, flip back to uh, chapter 7, Luke chapter 7. Flip back there and look at verse 36. I want you all to do something, especially finishing this year out and coming in the next. Stay out of God's business. Just do your business. Let me just add, stay out of other folk business and God. <laughs> see, 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 when you believe you receive and you get in faith, manifestation is God's business. Our business is to believe we receive when we pray. You can't do God's business, and he ain't going to do it. You believe you receive. Manifest. God, you can't tell him how. He told Naaman, 2 Kings 5, he said, I need you to go to this, mud, this Jordan, muddy Jordan and dip seven times. Oh, he going to get an attitude. Mm. Why, I got, why? You see, why I got to go to Jordan? I got cleaner rivers. At the house, at my, in my neighborhood. Why I got to go over there? You notice God didn't change his instructions Amen. to accommodate him. The Bible says in Luke chapter 7, verse what? 36. Verse 36. Then one of the Pharisees, a religious man, asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee. Jesus went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a what? Sinner. Everybody in the city. She was a notorious sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster of flax of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her, of her head, and she kissed his feet and anointed them with, with, the, with the fragrant oil. And look at verse 39. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself. Listen to what he said. Because he would have rejected her giving. He spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner a woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Everybody knew who she was. He would have, he would have rejected it because of what he knew about it. But Jesus received. She was sowing into the Lord, and he received it. God can use who he want to use. I'm telling you right now, God's going to use some sinners to pay off your house, give you a car, make sure you get that promotion. Yeah. Make sure your child get that scholarship, tuition paid in full. Your grandson going to get the... Be sinners! So Oral Roberts was, years ago, years ago, Oral Roberts was building, man, what a university he built, ORU and built the hospital, all this. So, you know, he needed, he needed a whole lot of money. This center man who owned a race, a, a, I think it was a dog track racing thing, he was the owner of it. He gave Oral Roberts a million dollars. And everybody criticized Oral Roberts for taking the million dollars from the center. And they told him, you a man of God and you taking that tainted money. Old Robert said, it taint enough. <laughs> I, I got to have some more. Look. <laughs> Look at Luke chapter 10. Jesus, watch this, write this statement down. Here it is, Sharon. Jesus was a good giver and a very good or great receiver. Jesus was a great giver and a great receiver. In St. John 6, 11, Jesus received a little boy's lunch. In Luke 10, he taught his disciples to receive. Because some of us, we struggle. I did. I was a giver, but I, I, always, but I, I struggled with the receiving part. Because I had an attitude about it. I don't want nobody to give me nothing. 
open up the door, I'll get it myself, James Brown said. So, but watch this. But, but God's way is giving and receiving. Swallow your pride. Luke chapter 10, verse 3. I'm talking about no strings attached now. Luke chapter 10, verse what? Three. Listen to what Jesus told his disciples. Luke 10, verse 3. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one along the road. But whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house, and if a son of, and if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest on it. If not, it will return it. Look at verse 7. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking, such things as what? As they what? As they what? As they give for the laborer is worthy of his weight. Do not go from house to house. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things. So he taught them, look, receive. Don't do like the lady, man. You get in the car, needles on E, you see it's on E. So she's driving you. And, you know, she, she takes you to your stop, and you reach in your pocket, and you give her $20 to put in the gas tank. And she says, oh, no, I can't take that. And then you get out the car, and she drive off praying, Lord, help me to make it. But the, 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 he just gave you $20 to put in the gas tank. You got to receive. I said you got to receive. When it comes to giving, we need to stop looking at our circumstances. We need to just obey God. And the giving is going to cause the receiving. Come on, say, I receive. I receive. Amen. Was it 2005 they gave me the Phantom Rolls Royce? Yeah, the church gave it to me. He said, what did you do? I, I received it and drove. <laughs> they, they didn't tally up everything, McGee, yet. Yeah, but, but they, I think uh, last, a uh, pastor's appreciation, y'all giving, so far, I, they, they, still ta they still count well over $100,000. <laughs> Ain't nobody happy with, no, y'all with me. Okay, come on. Well, what, 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 what did you do, preacher? You know what I did? I received it. Now, what if somebody want to give you? Well, you're you going you to receive or you're going to get religious. Because God said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. There's some stuff, there's some stuff he just want to give you. But you got to receive it. Solomon was a good receiver. We know he was a giver. Solomon gave over a thousand burnt offers at one time. Solomon was a great giver, but he was a great receiver. And guess what? He became a multi-trillionaire. Ain't no multi-trillionaires walking around on this earth right now. Yeah, they got billionaires. And some of them really goofy. They just doing stuff. But watch this. He would, you know why Solomon, could be, God could bless him with all that? Because he just kept receiving. He never got to the point where he said, that's all right, God. I don't need no more. I'm all right. It ain't about you. Okay, let's say you don't want no more. Are you good? Ain't no problem. No problem. But what? Go on and believe for more so you can be a greater blessing to somebody else. Every head bow, every eye close. Heavenly Father, right now, I'm asking that you seal this word in the heart of your people. Seal it so the devil won't steal it in Jesus' name. Now, we're heads about eyes are closed. Christians are praying. You're here tonight. You're not saved, but you want to be saved. You want to come into the family of God. You want to be born again. Raise your hand and raise a high, anyone here. You are, are watching online. You want to receive Jesus as your Savior. I need you to pray this prayer with me. Just pray it out loud. Everybody, come on, say, Dear God, I repent of my sin. I believe that Jesus died on the cross in my place and was raised from the dead for me. I call on you, Jesus, and invite you now to come into my life. I confess you as the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give God some praise for that, amen. Well, as giving child was a blessing, Christian Center, you need a title or offering envelope. Should be one right there in the chair in front of you.
If you're online, you need to give. There are six ways to give. We'll put it right there online. Six ways to give. And as you, I'm going to give you an opportunity to worship God with your tithes and with your offerings. Praise God. Praise God. Does anybody need any more time to make out a check or fill in an envelope? All right, let's lift it up. Come on, say, Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for seed to sow. I know you'll grow this seed I sow. I sow it in faith. I'm expecting my harvest. My broke days are over. Money cometh to me. I am a money magnet. I'm always having. I'm a distribution center. I've been blessed by God to be a blessing in Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive our tithes and our offerings for tonight, amen. While, you, while you're giving, uh, worshiping God with your tithes and offerings, of course, be in prayer. Tomorrow night, we'll be in Roxboro, North Carolina, with Pastor Danny Johnson on tomorrow night. They get started at 7.30. If you or anybody you know are in the Roxboro area, come join us. In fact, I got some good news they paid off their church building last month. Amen. Woo, I'm going to celebrate with them. My, 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 my. Anytime you hear that God, amen, is blessing your neighbor, it simply means that he's what? He's in the neighborhood. Amen. You, you next. Your house is next. Okay. So we want to, uh, we'll, to y'all be in prayer tomorrow for me as we travel to Roxborough on tomorrow.